symmetry and skewness of graphs. Now, we've already mentioned symmetric graphs, which is what we see here. And in this video, we're going to focus more on skewed graphs. In case you've forgotten, symmetric just means if you put a, a dotted line, it'll look the same on both sides. Uh, so we have some other graphs that are symmetric, our box and whisker plot. And if we look at our stem and leaf plot, you can see it's got a kind of curvature to it, which is symmetric. All right, so for skewed graphs, we've got two types. We've got what's called positively skewed at the top and then negatively skewed at the bottom. And what you'll notice with positively skewed graphs is most of the data is on the left side where your peak is. And then what you have on the right side is called the tail of the graph, of the curve. All right, on the, for negatively skewed graphs, most of the data is grouped on the right side, and then the tail is on the left. And that is how you tell whether it's positively or negatively skewed. So why, why do we do this? Well, if you look at, a really good way of looking at this is to look at a stem and leaf plot. It really demonstrates why this is useful. Because we look at the stem and leaf plot, we've got the numbers, uh, I'll actually write them down for you. So let's look at this one, call this stem, plot, stem and leaf plot 1 and stem and leaf plot 2. If we were to write the data for stem and leaf plot 1, you've got 5, 8, 8, then you've got 10, 15, 16, 19, 19, and so on. If I was to do the second stem and leaf plot, you've got the numbers 9, 10, 21, 22, 33, and so on. And what you'll notice with the first stem and leaf plot, most of the data are smaller numbers, such as your 10s and 20s. While in stem and leaf plot 2, most of your data are the bigger numbers, like your 40s and your 50s. So if something is positively skewed, you're going to find it's skewed more in the direction of the smaller numbers. And things that are negatively skewed are skewed more towards the bigger numbers.